I've always been a rooter for the underdogs. That's always been my 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 key with me is that an underdog is just somebody you hadn't really heard of and they come into prominence. KJ, he will always be known to me as the one that discovered Drake here in, in Chicago. He was one of the first people to recognize this guy and say he was gonna be the future. And I'm just like, not sold. I'm just like, yeah, I right, but every song it sounds like he just whining. Best I ever had, best I ever. I mean, he sounds like so depressed. I don't wanna be a success, So, this is before his, you know, his major album dropped. So these were the singles he had out that was popping, but I'm just like, man, he just sounds so de depressed and just like dull. You know, he don't sound joyous at all. It just sounds like one-tone mono, you know, but he had lyrics. But he was an underdog at that time. But my whole thing was, I'm like, you can listen to that. I got Uncle Murk. <laughs> So I, it was 2008, and I'm in the Uncle Murder train. I'm like, it's Uncle Murder everything. And he had the hottest mixtapes out, and I'm rocking with him. At this time, G-Unit is like on the back burner. They working on the next album. And... I'm looking at the climate of hip hop. When Wayne blew up, the 2009 era when when Wayne was coming up, and it was like to me that was like the Little Wayne takeover. I saw the shift where people was like, "Ugh, turn that 50 off." Boy, I don't want to hear that. Put some Wayne on. Everything was about Wayne. Little Wayne everything. I'm like, y'all really think Wayne? They used to tell me Wayne was better than, like, lyrically, he was better than Cassidy. And I'm like, nah, dog. <laughs> what? I'm like, Cassidy was, was coming with that fire, too. I'm like, Wayne don't want no parts of it. Because Cassidy was trying to actually... Uplift, he was fighting against what Lil Wayne was doing with the red cup, the serbs, the pills. Everything had switched to just taking drugs. And when that happened, Cassidy was on some other thing. You can't handle coke. You can't handle smoke. <laughs> you know, shoot, he talking about splitting your cantaloupe. That's why he's like, people 25 is dying of old age now. You know, so he was talking about people taking the drugs and, and damaging their lifestyles. You know, taking themselves out. So his raps has switched and got more educated. And people wasn't feeling it. They thought he was an old head. And they moved on from the Cassidy era. So... T.I. was blown his whole situation up, you know, and that was weird. It was a weird time. Uh, he just blew everything. Um, I'm trying to figure out what happened to everybody, man, because during that time, um, It was a large, large group of people that wasn't really, you know, doing anything with hip hop. Like the climate was so messed up, you know, uh, Uncle Murder couldn't get a record deal. And here I am on YouTube talking about Uncle Murder every day. <laughs> I'm promoting it. I don't even know he hear me. It had gotten back to him. Like, man, this dude be pumping you every day. Like, everybody like that was listening to me would go and find Uncle Murder on social media and was telling him. 
to when I actually spoke to him, he he knew who I was and every damn thing. I'm like, man, this dude know all about me. <laughs> and he was on the IG live and he saw me up there. He was, what's up, Carcino, man? Thanks for the love. You know, like, as soon as he saw my name. So that was just, that was the, like, that was just great and awesome appreciation because I didn't expect it. I didn't even know at the time he really knew who I was and that I wasn't jocking him. I appreciated the music. And he could tell, like, no, this dude really messed with my music. <laughs> like, he ain't trying to get on and get a shout out or do something like that. Like, he really messes with the music. He was the underdog coming up. So, of course, he was taking shots at everybody. He was doing stuff that was catching everybody out. Like, he'd take a shot at Suge. He would take a shot at anything moving. And I'm like, man, this dude is reckless. <laughs> and, man, they sending messages back. I'm like, man. i never forget when them, my boy was like, man, he just took out Uncle Murder. He gone. I'm like. Oh man, man, I was so, I was like let down the entire day. I just didn't feel good. Then I hit a song, I Ain't Dead. He put that out. Like the next day, it was already out. I Ain't Dead. I'm like, the name of this song is I Ain't Dead. Uncle Murdo, man, I, I'm like, he alive. Uncle Murdo alive. Man, it was like Superman lives. <laughs> that's that's how great that moment was. Like they made him change the spelling of his name because you can't you can't just you you walking away from marketing dollars when you got murder in the title. <laughs> then nobody liked Uncle Murder. Like everywhere I went, there was nobody really playing him. I had to play certain records around people because I knew what type of music they liked. And Uncle Murder had rapped on damn near every beat in the world. So I knew what I'm like, oh, I think he rapped on that beat. I'm going to play this track and play that on there. He's like, oh, man, that's a remix? I said, nah, that's Uncle Murder. <laughs> that, that joker who was screwing up the record ain't on it. <laughs> Uncle Murder on it. And he was funny. And I mean, people, he making everybody laugh and back then. And I was cracking up because I was, and people just don't be getting it, man. He be making everybody crack up laughing. I swear they be dying laughing listening to Uncle Murph. And they be like, man, I don't get it. Like, that ain't funny. And I'll be like, no, nah, nah, that's funny. You just don't, you got to listen to his story raps. And he reminded me a lot of 50 Cent. I was like, he got the energy like 50. You know, this dude's got the whole package. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no Nas. But he great in his element. He good at what he do. He don't need to change. Uncle Murder just need to be Uncle Murder. That's it. So... You know, he was with Violator, with Chris Lightley, he's with Manhood and them. They trying to really get him out there, but the majors ain't really doing it. And then the money was drying up. Like, I mean, it dried up fast. And they weren't taking no chances with no artists. They didn't care what buzz he had in the street. Um, his arrest on YouTube. Him going to the station, rather, from the project. I'm like, when they had that going down there, man, it was like, man, they arrested Uncle Murder live on tape. Like, he for real. <laughs> He's got to get arrested on tape or go to the station from the hood for people to be like, yo, man, he a real dude, man. Yo, guy for real. And people are watching this on YouTube. So, like, every city, everybody's seeing that, and they, like, giving him stripes. Like, look how you going there. He going to the police station like a G. Yeah, that's how I did it. Yup, yup, that's how I did it. Look, 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 he telling his homeboy, look, man, calm down, man. Yo, I got this. And ain't none of them going to go answer some questions. Like, man, yo, what I do? All right, I'm in the car, what I do? So, he got more love from people in the hood 
from black, blah, 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 blah. People in the hood started to deal with him. YouTube gave him a whole different connection. So if you want to be an underground artist, you know, nobody really chooses to be underground. Underground is just like where you land, <laughs> where you trying to come up. So you start from the underground. Some people just never get out of it. But that ain't where you ascended to be. I ain't never seen nobody say, yo, man, I just want to be underground. Uncle Murder was like, bet. I can do these couple moves. I, he want to be up there at the top because he can make good records. Now, the thing that changed the narrative for him is when he started doing the wrap-ups. Now, everybody in the world everybody in the world knew about this guy they they started to pay attention to him as skills who've been doing it forever is get it's all oh, that's cool it's dope ill uncle murder did it brought the house down well he missed the boat from being in g unit because, like he said, he was on this Brooklyn nuts, talking about he was waiting on Jay. And the Jay Z deal came and went. And I was like, man, I was better off for 50 cents. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Man, I've, I've enjoyed watching the growth of Uncle Merck. And the strength in this game of hip hop for the underdog to make it on top. Now, if I say Uncle Murder, everybody knows his name. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they, they just know him from the wrap up, uh, you know, just the casuals. And now they see him with 50 and all that, even though he's rocking the stage. You know, this is where Kid Kid should have been. You know, um, guys like him, Uncle Murder. Propane is another one from Houston, Texas. That's another venomous MC. You got Prince Easy from Chicago. You know, people be all, oh, you just be saying Prince Easy because he probably lived by you because he shouted your name out. And uh, they come up with every stupid reason in there. I'm like, dude, have you heard him? You know he different. You know what I'm saying? He different. If you hear him, you know him. He different. Propane, different. I ain't just making up names of people. Dino Money, different. These are the hip-hop artists that y'all got to look at. These your Avengers. These the underground. These the people that was in the streets grinding, in the clubs, Getting a record played. And the people in the streets are bumping this. But the radio is playing these other tunes that ain't vibing with. With what everybody else wants. And then they was like, just keep playing it. They gonna come around. Now everything sound like techno and dance, party dance music. That's the only thing that's gonna sell. They didn't drain country. They didn't drain hip hop. They drained everything that was negative or they thought was negative. R&B is just dead, future dead, everything. So anything that has something to do with black people being successful was disrupted. See, the game they can't control that they want to is the market. So if you're a rapper and you're an entertainer in this business, whether you're a professional athlete, actor, or whatever, most of them have an agency that they work for. And whether it's sports agency, or entertainment division, what have you, you're a part of a union. So you're paying deeds to a union, pro athlete, actor, what have you. Now, 
why are you paying these taxes and deeds and all these things? What are they really doing for you? Right? They're supposed to be giving you with a money manager, all these different things to help you stay afloat. Find you the opportunities. This is why you chose them. Now, that usually happens faster than what people imagine. But when um, other artists are having trouble finding someone to take them on, because that person has to take on the financial burdens as well as everything else. So, everything turns around. And when you see hip-hop and the growth, you look at R&B right now. Who's the female R&B star? You don't know. What song is the top R&B chart? You wouldn't know. All the R&B is dead. You got people singing hip-hop over hip-hop beats. That's it. And they're not even hitting it. They're missing cues. They're missing notes. Everybody's off-key with the singing because they're doing auto-tuning. It is terrible. It's like a mismatch of garbage. And they're promoting that because they want to delude what R&B really is. That's why they separated and said we're R&B soul. Because... You can't have, which they did before, have, you know, Anita Baker going up against Bobby Brown. You know, it's just like, that's not going to make any sense. But they didn't care. They just looked at us as a gumbo pot anyway and just said, screw it. They all black. Throw them in the same category. Well. The same thing that happens to everybody else. They want to use social media to market their products. So they're going to pay for marketing. They're going to pay for the advertiser. They're going to pay to blacklist everyone else, but make sure they're successful. See, it ain't about there's room enough for everybody. They don't have that philosophy. They want you to basically come work for them. One less competitor they have to worry about. Now, the hip hop game and the music. When Uncle Murder came on the scene and took over, that impact was huge. The underground was his. He was dropping the mixtapes that was moving heavy. Then he had a song on there with 50 called Negroes Be, Sch Be Scheming. The N-words be scheming. And then that set apart another era. You know, I'm Angel G from Chicago still coming up. I remember him. He's still young in the game. But all these dudes is hungry to get their work out there. You know, and it's it's sad that the money has dried up. There's no development money anymore, no talent that they sign. They got to be ready to go and have like two, three albums done already, you know? So it's, it's sad. Well... I'm thinking we'll just end it here and we'll talk about some other hip hop moments and songs. Somebody wanted me to talk about some underground hip hop. I was like, my man used to own a place called the uh, the Sire, the Shrine. I'm sorry, here in Chicago, the Shrine. Sorry about that. He ran the Shrine. The Shrine was the top spot. For hip hop, hieroglyphics is there um, with uh, casual, and they perform like the majority of their hits. 
And Cass always gives me, shows me love every time you see me on IG. He always gives me respect and love for me even doing I think I did like one video on it. And I highlighted the group. And just, I, just the one video I did was enough for them to be forever grateful. See, this, these are the moments I tell you people don't even know about. You can help change people's lives in a positive way just by mentioning them, you know, in a certain light. But you also have to be very careful with some of the people you're making videos on. You know, for the newcomer that's trying to make a video, it's a lot of things you have to redo in life. Such as, not to say fall short of, but let's say for instance, you know, you got an album coming out, a mixtape, and you want to get it out there, and you feel like you want to press up enough so you can sell them out your trunk of your car. Okay, fine. You're now an entrepreneur. You're going to try to sell trunk records out the trunk of your car. You're building an audience. You're building an atmosphere that's built on, okay, I'm going to work for me instead of somebody else. But the problem is, you're not there yet. You're not at a point where you can just say, all right, I'm gonna leave all this and you know, it's all on you, I ain't gonna bother you no more. I'm coming to get the money. I'm gonna come and collect whatever you may owe. So, it's a lot more trickier than um, they're letting it out to be. You know, so. The hip-hop game is, you know, well, another female R&B uh, singer said it. They love R&B, meaning white folks. They just don't want black people singing it. That's, that's where they're at with it. So this R&B singer doesn't want to come around, you know, the white singing celebrities like the Katy Perry's or the, you know, Selena Gomez's and those people, you know, they just freak out. Completely freak out. So. Hmm. This is weird. I'm getting sleepy, so I guess that's time. All right. God bless and boat dreams, everyone. Go on to sleep.